Hello everyone and welcome back. So at this point, we have pretty much finished the basic sculpting system that we set out to do in session seven. Wouldn't you agree, Lee? Yeah, well, you know, it doesn't have the ability to rotate or stencil. The basic but... sculpting system. Oh, well, yeah, okay, yeah, then yeah, the, the basics are done. And at this point, we were originally going to call it, but Lee and I did a little bit of talking and I did a little bit of prodding, and, you know, saying, Lee, it would be really cool if we had some sort of basic UI in place that allowed us to control our tools. Most importantly for me would be things like strength and opacity. And uh, Lee took it upon himself to schedule a little extra R&D time, and he came up with a little Red has less sleep, but, you know, <laughs> True. less game playing time. So, Lee, if you'd like to show them what we're going to be creating over the next, I don't know, 10 videos or so. Well, I was going to let you do it because it's much easier for you to do it on oh, your side. Okay. Well, if I come in here and activate the tool, I now get this really groovy bar down here at the bottom that allows me to select, am I going to raise? Am I going to lower? Am I going to level? Am I going to smooth? Am I using a soft, a hard? a noise or a stencil brush. With the stencil brushes, I can see all of my stencils that are available and I can go through and I can select. I can control my strength, I can control my opacity. Yeah, those so, aren't wired up though. Not yeah, I, yeah, not yet. They will be as we go through the videos. But um, it's, a, it's a snazzy looking little, uh, for, for a simple little system, heck yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, Lee, is there anything you want to say? I mean, this, so this is what we're going to build. Oh, I, I was just letting you go with it. It's well, like, you know I'm, me. I'll just sit here and play for hours. Well, um, just just a little note. This is not a super advanced UI. This is built with Unity's built-in GUI. So one of the things that is interesting, if you bring up the stats window real quick. Mm -hmm. Hang on. There we go. Okay. All right. You'll notice that we have you know, somewhere between about 36 and 40 draw calls. And then if you turn the tools off, we're down to 16 draw calls. Yeah, it's expensive. So, yeah, it's hang, not a very efficient Hang on, system. there we go. Let me get the stencils up. <laughs> yeah, now we're up to 55, 58. So it, it's not the most efficient system. And it's not coded to be fully flexible. One of the things that... Uh, we were talking about earlier was in the forums a couple of people have started playing around with making their own custom brushes and if we wanted to add more brushes right now we couldn't add them to the UI because they're hard coded to only support four sculpt tools and four brushes so in a real system with say something like an MMO that we might look at developing for some reason or other, we definitely want to look at a different type of system that allowed us to add more brushes and sculpt tools yeah, on the fly without having to go in and adjust the positions and the coding of everything. Right. So a lot of this is going to be similar to the quick UI that we threw together for the um, noise R&D session, where it's just something that's functional and gives us something nice to look at as opposed to trying to remember what every one of the hotkeys are. Mm -hmm. And we had to do some simplified... Uh, working around because the Unity stuff doesn't uh, really allow us to set the functionality that we're trying to get at by default, where if you select on one of the brushes, you end up uh, change or one of the brushes where it detoggles every other brush. Mm -hmm. So right now where you have noise selected, if you were to go select the soft oh, hang brush. On. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to play with that. <laughs> I'll have one little hole in it, so I was curious. Yeah, what was going to happen? Yeah, exactly. Well, you're on level, so not a whole lot. You'd have to switch over to a raise. Well, or, everybody or... but that one guy. I mean, hang on. Well, Let's... you're you're leveling. I know, but oh, okay. I'm only leveling where it's red. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so I, I had one little hole in it. I thought that was kind of odd, so I was like, huh, let me try that out. 
But uh, one of the things with the toggles is they don't have the ability to the, the toggle off everything else. This particularly becomes challenging when you're talking about the stencils where we want to turn one stencil on, but we have 18 others that need to turn off at the same time. So we're going to show you a easier way of going ahead and putting that functionality in, but it's not to the point where you can sit there and go, oh yeah, I need another 20 stencils and it automatically adapts to the system. It doesn't work quite that nicely. Right. And then we had to implement something else because as you can see, when Jason's playing around with the uh, system, as he hits the modifier keys for the sculpt tools, like if he were to hit control or control and shift or shift, you can see that it's automatically going through and updating which tool he's selecting. So I had to introduce the concept of a sticky tool, which means that once you manually select one of the sculpt tool uh, buttons on your bar, that overrides the modifier keys and causes that particular um, tool to be stuck to your control. And every time you press the left mouse button, you will have the functionality of that tool until you either select a different tool on the bar or you hit any one of the modifier keys. The moment you hit the modifier keys, you destick the tool and it goes back into its normal operation. These are things that aren't built into the uh, Unity set of GUI controls, so we had to put something together to make that work. And we have certain limitations. One of the ones that is most notable that kind of annoyed me is if you look at the sliders, the sliders don't have the ability to have tooltips where it would have been really nice is with particularly the noise brush where we've got those six sliders. It would have been really nice if we could hover over them and they could tell you what they do mm -hmm. as opposed to not having any descriptive information whatsoever. And I didn't want to take up a whole lot of uh, screen space on our toolbar to make room for what does what so it's pretty much hit a slider see what it does which is really bad ui design so but unfortunately i'm working with some limitations that i didn't have a lot of time to whip up a full-fledged um interface of our own so it's done very quickly um, I, th I think it was a matter of a, a couple of hours actually yep, that is correct and the idea is that we were going to go ahead and give it to you guys as an extra set of videos, but we're, we're going to go ahead and just bundle them into session seven. But I'd, I'd like for you to think of them as kind of like some bonus stuff where, you know, Lee's done all that needs to be done in regards to proving, all right, here we've got some, um, some, some different sculpting tools to work with. So now let's move on to vertex caching and to persistence because obviously that's going to be the next big hurdle to get over. So this stuff, well, this world persists after we come in here and sculpt it. But uh, it was it was really nice of him to spend a couple of extra hours, and now we're going to go through another couple of hours of recording. Just for those of you that have never worked with any of the uh, the GUI uh, elements available inside of Unity, this will kind of give you a little bit of a, hey, here's how you can do it. Not to mention, it does give you um, a, a, a fun little UI to play with that's simple. And if you build this out and we get to a point where we have persistence going on, it'll be something uh, a lot of fun to play with. Yeah, and I definitely didn't steal any cues from any other sculpting products out on the market that you may or may not have played with. <laughs> oh, it's funny. <laughs> All right. Hey, inspiration happens in sometimes the most unexpected places and sometimes the most expected. <laughs> but uh, with that, is there anything else, Lee, that you wanted to talk about here in the um, overview or are we ready to get started? Well, I think the only thing left is I'm going to have to package up all the assets that I used to create this into a, uh, a, a file, another RAR, mm -hmm. and throw that in some sort of sticky thread on the forum so everybody will have it because we're not going to go into Photoshop and show you how I created all the assets. Right. But we will make them available for you guys in the class. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, with that, that is going to conclude the GUI overview that we're going to be creating over the next, I don't know, around 10 videos. 
Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and bring this video to a close and get started with uh, setting up a GUI skin. Thanks a lot, everyone.